So if you've been thinking about doing some extra walking to lose weight and leverage the power of walking to get leaner, in this video, I must dispel a few myths and tackle a couple of misconceptions specifically related to walking for weight loss. I've seen this misinformation out there hold people back from making a sustainable lifestyle change for really getting the results that they want, keeping them in a plateau, and I need to address this. Now, the other thing I do wanna point out, if you haven't checked out my two previous videos on walking where I talked about walking versus running and why I personally prefer walking to get really, really lean, I'll definitely recommend you check that one out, and also how much walking I I personally do and how much you should do as well to get leaner both are linked in the description below check them out and now let's move on to the myths and misconceptions when it comes to walking so the first big myth that i've seen out there related to walking is this claim that we should prefer walking over other activities when it comes to losing body fat because walking is a primarily fat burning activity because it's low intensity and during low intensity activities your body prefers to use fat as the primary fuel source this is actually correct yes it's true you will oxidize and burn more fat while walking compared to something like high intensity interval training where you're gonna use glycogen, you're gonna use carbohydrate as the primary fuel source. But the problem here is and what's incorrect is that fat burning is not the same thing as fat loss. Fat loss is the process of losing body fat and getting leaner. And that is determined by energy balance calories in versus calories out. And you need to create a caloric deficit to enter fat loss. And the caloric deficit, yes, walking helps, but the primary way of creating caloric deficit should be your diet. You can't outrun, outwalk, outexercise a poor diet. I see a lot of people doing 15,000 steps a day, 20,000 steps a day, and they're not seeing fat loss and they're doing all this fat burning, but it's just the weight isn't going down. That's because the diet is not dialed in. So you have to get into a caloric deficit using your diet. And of course, you want to do resistance training because as you're in a caloric deficit losing weight, you don't want to be losing muscle. And this actually ties well into the Second myth here is that a lot of people will say, well, walking is this low intensity activity, helps me keep my cortisol levels down compared to running, which will raise your cortisol level temporarily because it's a stressful activity. And because walking is so low intensity, and so good to reduce the stress levels, it actually helps you mobilize the midsection body fat. It helps you remove stubborn belly fat. It helps you spot reduce that, which is incorrect. You cannot spot reduce body fat. This is genetically determined where you're gonna store the fat, in what order you're gonna release that fat from your body as you're losing it. Now, there are some patterns, of course, as you're losing body fat as you're in a caloric deficit it's usually going to come off from the face first then from your top of your shoulders then from your arms upper back upper chest and slowly going down to that midsection where you're usually going to see your upper abs then you're going to see your mid abs and lastly you're going to see that bottom row come out when you really lean down and there are genetic differences. I mean, there are people that will get very lean legs and still have that midsection body fat covering the bottom row of their abs. Now, there are other people where they're gonna see their abs completely and their legs will still store quite a lot of body fat. So it's genetically determined. There is no magic wand that can target the stubborn belly fat. And a lot of people will then do 15, 20,000 steps a day believing in this and they're just looking at their belly and it's not shrinking. And while they're losing fat and everywhere else, but they're still getting discouraged because they don't care about anything else. They're just looking at the midsection all the time. That is, again, why these myths and misconceptions lead to poor results discouragement. So if you're looking to get leaner, you're really looking to remove that body fat in the midsection. Let's say you want to get abs, you want to get down to 10% body fat. You have to stay in a caloric deficit over a long period of time. That's what makes it hard. That's why it's so difficult to get these results. I mean, if there was some kind of simple hack, you could simply do it overnight, but it just doesn't work like that. There is no magic solution. You have to follow the process like the rest of us. And it's just the way it works. Calorie deficit over a longer period of time. Now, before we dive into the third myth, please do me a favor and go below the video right now and smash that like button as hard as you can. It helps a ton with the YouTube algorithm so we can push this video out to help more people. Now, moving on to myth number three related to walking, that walking in a fasted state is superior to walking in a fed state when it comes to fat loss. Again, 
incorrect. This is not true. How much fat you're going to lose is determined by energy balance, calories in versus calories out. So it doesn't matter when you do the walking as long as you do do the walking. So you can do all your steps in the morning if you like it, you can do it in the evening, you can spread it around the day. If anything, actually it can help to do some walking after you've had a meal because it can help you with digestion, help you with your energy levels. And it's really about consistency. Can you get 10K steps a day? When can you plan it in to make sure that you're organized enough, that you schedule it in there, that you get consistent 10K steps a day on average, you will really start seeing some incredible benefits from doing that. But again, it doesn't matter whether it's fasted, as long as you do your walking, you're totally fine. Myth number four, walking is so effective that it's the only activity you really need to focus on when you want to get a lean body. And once again, this is incorrect. First and foremost, walking doesn't build muscle. In order to get a lean athletic physique around 10 or 12% body fat, you do need resistance training to build and retain muscle. Walking is not going to do that. And it's not going to lead you to a better body composition at your target weight. So if you're starting at 220, you want to go down to 160 pounds, well, you're going to lose a ton of muscle in the process. You're going to end up skinny fat if you're not incorporating resistance training. So resistance training is super important here. Secondly, cardio is important. Walking will not train your heart sufficiently compared to cardio. Swimming, cycling, running, adding a little bit of that can really make a lot of difference or sports or other activities that are a little bit more intense. Unless you're completely out of shape, walking will not provide that stress to your cardiovascular system to really yield those adaptations that will make your heart healthier, that will really boost your longevity, that will really get all those health benefits. So a combination of these three activities is critical. So let's say walking 10,000 steps a day, three to four resistance training sessions throughout the week, adding a little bit of cardio on top of that, a couple of sessions really does wonders to create an amazing active lifestyle, a great routine that you can follow, enjoy throughout the week. You really pick the activities you enjoy as far as cardio, and it really makes it a sustainable, healthy lifestyle that allows you to get lean and also stay lean a lot easier. And by the way, if you haven't checked out my entire walking series, I'm going to link that in the description below. Tons of information there on how to walk more, how to make this a part of your lifestyle. Check that out. Also, make sure to subscribe below by hitting that subscribe button, enable notifications by hitting the bell icon as well, so you get to know when my next video comes out. If you want to work with me as your coach to help you on your fitness journey. Link is in the description below. Check that out as well. And I will see you in my next video.